Hi everyone, welcome back to the second session of TCS Ninja. So today we'll be solving the first model paper, which is completely become, uh, based on the model paper which is conducted by the TCS, right? TCS mock test. So which we have already solved earlier. So based on that paper, we created another paper which is very similar to that. Okay. So and as I already told you, you could even take the test of this particular paper in advance and the link of which is already given here. You can also join our WhatsApp group for our regular updates and for that also the link is already provided in the description guys. So hi, I'm Abhilash Verma. Welcome to Learn Online. So to start with, our first question goes something like this. A pot has a six green marbles and eight blue marbles. If two marbles are picked randomly one after the other, from the pot, marble once pegged cannot be replaced back in the pot. Find the probability of getting both green marbles. Well, great. So in the pot, we have six green marbles and eight blue marbles. Okay. Now we have to pick two marbles randomly one after the other. Well, in the previous case, in the previous paper, we have seen picking three marbles randomly. But they were not one after the other, we were picking simultaneously. But in this question, we have to pick one after the other and which you should be very careful about. Now, what is said? And marble once picked cannot be replaced back in the pot. So that is nothing but this is a without a replacement. Now, what exactly this with replacement and without replacement, those things I we have clearly explained in you no know, basic aptitude. In basic aptitude, probability, you will understand what exactly this means there. Okay. Now, so find the probability of getting both the green. Both green means first one I need green and even the second one I need green. Okay. So first one green. What is the probability of getting green when you pick one marble out of it? What is the probability of getting green out of total 14. Now, green is, you want one green out of six greens, that is 61 divided by total cases. Probability is number of favorable cases divided by total cases. Total cases, totally 14 are there and you are picking one at a time. So, that is 14 C1 into, now green. Again, you need green, but this is without replacement. Remember, you have already removed one green out of it. Agree? Still, how many green will be there? Still, 5 green will be there and 8 blue will be there. So, now 5 green are there. You need 1 green out of it. That will be 5 C1 divided by. Now, totally how many are there? Out of 14, 1 green is already gone means still 13 marbles will be there. Out of 13, you need 1. How do we do that? 13 C1. So, this actually could have written directly which is 6 by 14 into 5 by 13. So after cancellation, two threes, two sevens. So what do we have? Seven, five, five threes is 15 divided by 13 sevens is 91. So 15 by 7, 91 must be our final answer. Moving on to the second question. Our question is something like this. A train is traveling at 108 km per hour, crosses a platform in 28 seconds. And it also crosses train B, which is 240 meter long and is traveling at a speed of 72 km per hour in same direction as that of train A in 48 seconds. Then what is the length of the platform in meter? Well, again, this is similar to the question which we have solved earlier. Earlier, there were, that was also a two scenario problem where a train was crossing a platform and a train was crossing a man. But in this case, a train is crossing a platform train is crossing a platform. Now the same train is crossing another train which is going in the same direction. Okay. Two scenarios. Scenario 1 and scenario 2. Okay. Let us go with the data. A train A. So this is train A and this is also train A and this is train B. Okay. Train A running at 108 km per hour. 108 km per hour. So A. 108 km per hour. Now crosses a platform in 28 seconds. So this train crosses the platform in 28 seconds. Remember that. And it also crosses a train B of 240 meter long. 240 meter long running at 72 kilometer per hour. KMPH or kilometer per hour. Both are same. 
okay uh, in 48 seconds now the train crosses the a train a crosses train b in 48 seconds right now what is the length of the platform in meters what is the length of the platform in meters guys you know initially i am giving you a pictorial representation so that you can understand better when the question is very lengthy if you represent it like this it will be easier for you to start with okay now how do you start the questions based on uh, problems on trains remember always start from what exactly you want at the end of the question we need length of the platform let us consider it as lp okay now here the length of this train is not given let me consider it as la length of train a now we want length of the platform means we have to start with distance formula we know distance is equals to speed into time well in this case a distance is a length of the train a and length of the train p so what do i write la plus lp is the total distance equals to speed into time speed of only this train because platform doesn't move so speed is 108 km per hour let me convert it into meter per second by multiplying with 5 by 18 so units become meter per second into time taken 28 second now why i have converted it into meter per second because the time is given in 28 seconds or else you have to convert the time into hours that is 28 by 60 into 60 so but this looks pretty easier compared to the other way around right now moving ahead seconds and seconds get cancelled 18 into 1 18 into 6 is 108 now we have 6 into 5 30 30 into 28 so that is 900 840 meter we will get so this is a length of train a plus length of platform but we need only length of the platform to know that we need length of the train a so what do we do we go to case 2 scenario 2 and then we'll calculate the length of train a well length of train a is la now remember why did we come here to calculate length of train a length where do you find it in distance again we'll start with the distance equals to speed into time but in this case what is the distance length of train a and length of train b we do not know length of train a i will take it as la plus length of train b is a 240 meter that is equals to speed careful now there are two speeds 108 km per hour and 72 km per hour which speed do you consider average speed or relative speed it must be relative speed why relative speed because two moving objects whenever you see two moving objects at a time relative speed comes into picture okay now relative speed of two objects moving in the same direction is difference of their individual speed that is 108 km per hour minus 72 km per hour that should give us 108 minus 72 is 36 km per hour this is overall speed into time taken is 48 seconds that is given in the question so again uh, I had to convert it into 5 by 18 what would I do uh, let me write it here 36 into km per hour is 5 by 18 meter per second actually I should have done this here only I'm so sorry into 48 seconds seconds and seconds get cancels 18 into 1 18 into 2 is 36 so what do i have here 2 into 5 is 10 10 into 40 is 480 and units left out is meter so what is this l a plus 240 meter okay the same thing now but we want only length of the train a l a so we will send the 240 to the other side 480 minus 240 is 240 meters only so let us bring it here and put it in this case okay we know now lp is equals to 840 meter minus la la goes to the other side so what is la 240 so when you subtract this you should get la is equals to 600 meters and that is our length of the platform another question which is again based on elections in an election between three candidates first candidate got 40 percent of the total valid votes and the second candidate got 35 percent of the valid votes and third candidate got the remaining valid votes it means one guy got 45 40 percent of valid and third second person got 35 percent of valid 75 percent are done remaining 25 percent should have been received by the third candidate now 18% of the votes were declared invalid. If the total number of votes was 96,000, the total number of valid votes secured by the candidate 
who got the least number of votes was okay now guys very simple question let us not make many partitions like in the previous case let us try to solve it in a simple way okay now there are three people a b c okay he told a the first candidate got 40 percent of the total valid votes that is 40 percent of v v is valid votes second candidate got 35 percent of the valid votes and the third candidate got remaining valid votes 40 plus 30 is 35 is 75 remaining will be 25 percent of valid votes okay now we know that totally 96,000 votes are there out of which 18 percent are invalid now 18 percent are invalid means valid must be equal to 82 percent of total votes agree 82 percent of the total votes right so that is equals to 82 percent of total votes is 96,000 now what is he asking the number of valid votes are secured by the candidate who got the least number of votes obviously that must be c now c is equals to 25 percent means 1 by 4 25 percent means a 25 by 100 which is 1 by 4 of v valid votes what are valid 82 percent into 82 percent means 82 by 100 of total 96,000 votes so rest is only cancellation here i'm so sorry i put one extra zero there so what happens a double zero double zero get cancelled four into one uh, four into twenty four is ninety six one extra zero now let us multiply if i multiply twenty four with eighty two what do we get eight four thirty two thirty six three this is sixteen this is nineteen one extra zero one nine one nine six eight zero must be the total votes received by the candidate who secured the least number of votes that is our c right moving ahead we have another question it says uh, five positive consecutive integers starting with a have an average that is a average and i'm so sorry that is actually an average b okay now what is the average of the five consecutive integers that start with b plus five Achha, take it. so what do we have average of five positive positive consecutive integers starting with a is b so starting with a means next one will be a plus one consecutive integers next one will be a plus two next one will be a plus three and the next one will be a plus four average means sum of all these numbers divided by totally five numbers now this average is equals to b according to the question so when we solve this we'll get 5a plus 10 by 5 is equals to b let us take 5 common here i'll be left with a plus 2 divided by 5 equals to b b b get cancelled what do we have we have a plus 2 equal to b now what is he asking us to do he is asking us to calculate what is the average of the five consecutive integers starting with b plus 5 starting with b plus 5 now if you look at the options options are in terms of a a plus 4 a plus 7 b plus 2 and a plus 9 let us see what can we do starting with b plus 5 and 5 integers b plus 5 is the first number and b plus 6 is the second number b plus 7 b plus 8 b plus 9 okay now sum all these numbers divided by 5 what is this value this is what we have to identify so b plus b plus b plus b plus b 5b is 5b plus now let us add the remaining stuff what do we have here 5 plus 6 is 11 11 plus 7 is 18 18 plus 8 is 26 26 plus 9 is 35 35 divided by 5 so we can take 5 copy here and we'll be left with b plus 7 divided by 5 5 5 gets cancelled our answer is b plus 7 but hold on if you look at the option do we have b plus 7 no see three options are in terms of a now bring this relationship we know b's value is a plus 2 from this so this is equals to b value is a plus 2 plus 7 and finally this must be equal to a plus 9 this must be our final answer moving ahead Question number five, we have one factorial plus two factorial plus three factorial. So until 100 factorial is divided by seven. What is the reminder? Achha. Simple question, guys. Looks scary, but not. 
we have 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial so on till 100 factorial plus 100 factorial divided by 7 I'm sorry divided by 7 and we need to find what is the remainder of this right guys observe this can be actually written as 1 factorial by 7 plus 2 factorial by 7 plus 3 factorial by 7 plus 4 factorial by 7 plus 5 factorial by 7 plus 6 factorial by 7 plus 7 factorial by 7 plus and so on till 100 factorial by 7 okay now if you talk about the reminders guys here the remainder is a 0 here the remainder is 0 why 7 factorial is 7 into 8 into uh, sorry 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so there is a 7 in the numerator and there is a 7 in the denominator means obviously it will be divisible numerator is divisible by denominator so the remainder is 0 even when you take 8 factorial 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 again in the denominator we will be having 7 8 into 7 numerator also 7 is there denominator also 7 is there obviously next number 8 factorial by 7 is also divisible by 7 so there also remainder 0 so so on till 100 factorial after 6 factorial in every other number we will be having remainder as 0 because all those numbers will be divisible by 7 okay now what about the rest of the part this is the only part that we need to deal with okay 1 factorial is 1 2 factorial is 2 3 factorial is 6 4 factorial is 24 5 factorial is 120 6 factorial is 720 whole divided by 7 is what we have okay so let us add them up and get the reminder people so 720 plus 120 will be 840 840 plus 30 873 okay 873 divided by 7 let me cross verify one more time 720 840 840 plus 30 870 873 so we need what is the remainder of this okay check this out 7 into 12 is 84 7 into 12 is 84 here remainder will be 3 33 7 into 4 28 33 minus 28 5 remainder is 5 that must be my final answer now think about it guys what if in place of 7 we have 9 here if we have 9 here what will you do that will be slightly difficult okay let us have a look at that also now before 9 let me show you with the 5 and let me show you with the 6 so that you can do it with the 9 as well okay there you have to be careful there you have to be careful there i am taking you to the slightly higher level now first basic level will deal with the 5 okay 1 factorial by 5 plus 2 factorial by 5 plus 3 factorial by 5 plus 4 factorial by 5 plus 6 factorial by 5 sorry 5 plus 6 factorial by 5 so on till 100 factorial by 5 guys from here onwards we need not to bother anything because in from here onwards in every term in the numerator there will be 5 and denominator there is a 5 means always reminder 0 0 0 0 0 so we need to only bother about this part what do we have 1 factorial is 1 2 factorial is 2 3 factorial is 6 4 factorial is 24 divided by 5 we need to calculate what is the remainder this is nothing but remainder of 24 30 33 by 5 33 by 5 and the remainder is 3 okay 33 by 5 remainder is 3 now what happens instead of 5 if there is a 6 here look it's not that simple it is not that way observe what can be done here let me show you that what if there is a 6 instead of 5 so what do we take 1 1 factorial by 6 plus 1 fact uh, 2 factorial by 6 plus 3 factorial by 6 plus 4 factorial by 6 plus 5 factorial by 6 plus 6 factorial by 6 plus you need not to write all those things but I'm just to make you understand I'm showing it finally we'll get 100 factorial by 6 agree now here 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 obviously 6 is the remainder 0 from now onwards everywhere remainder 0 now even here also remainder 0 even here also remainder 0 even here also remainder 0 why let me show them individually when you have 3 factorial 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1 divided by 6 guys 3 into 2 into 1 is 6 6 by 6 what is the remainder 0 likewise in 4 factorial also 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 
look there is a 6 here 3 into 2 all right so again 6 is the denominator 6 is there means here also remind of 0 likewise in 5 factorial 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 another 3 into 2 is there so here also remind of 0 so you need to deal with only this part what is that 1 factorial 1 2 factorial 2 3 by 6 a reminder what is 3 by 6 reminder do not write 1 by 2 reminder is 3 only 3 by 6 reminder is a 2 so that is my final answer now let us see what happens if you have 9 factorial if you have 9 factorial now you need to check where do you get the first 9 in the factorials that comes exactly at 6 factorials let me show you that okay look one thing you understood now when it is divided by 7 after 7 factorial we need not to deal with when it is divided by 5 after 4 factorial from 5 factorial we need not to deal with here also if divided by 6 means after 5 factorial we need not to deal with now 9 factorial means after 9 8 factorial from 9 factorial on, onwards we need not to deal with we have to check from 1 factorial to 8 factorial what happens let us see 1 factorial divided by 9 plus 2 factorial divided by 9 plus 3 factorial divided by 9 plus 4 factorial divided by 9 plus 5 factorial divided by 9 plus 6 factorial divided by 9. Now, we have already crossed it people. From here onwards, it will be 0 only. Let me show you that. Now, uh, when I, uh, still, anyways, let me write it for you. What do we have? 7 factorial divided by 9 plus 8 factorial divided by 9 plus 9. Uh, that's it. I'm so sorry. Now, as I told you, you need to deal about only this part. Here everywhere it is 0, 0, 0. Why? What is 6 factorial? 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Agree? Divided by 9. See, if you see there is a 3 here. In 6 also, 6 is what? 3 into 2. Now what is 3 into this 3? 9. So here there is a 9. 9 divided by 9. Reminder will be 0. Now even in the 7 factorial, I will get one extra 7 here. Does that make any change here? Nothing. Again in 6 we have 1, 3. Here we have 1, 3. 3 into 3, 9. So this is also reminder 0. This is also reminder 0. So we need to only deal with this part. 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial and 5 factorial. Let us get that answer as well. Why to waste the time? So this part, okay. Now that is 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, 4 factorial is how much? 24. 5 factorial is 120. Okay. Divided by 9. What is the reminder? 120. This is 30. 153. We have 153 divided by 9. 153 divided by 9. What is the reminder? Reminder is 0. Why? 9 into 17 is 153. It is completely divisible by 9. So, reminder is 0. So, you have to check out guys. Even when it is, you know, uh, for example, divided by 12. Divided by 12 means where do you get the first 12? For 12 you need, uh, 12 is 4 into 3. The moment where you see 4 into 3, there onwards you need not to bother about. For example, let's see here onwards. Here onwards, if it is divided by 12, here itself. From here onwards, everything will be 0. Why? You will find 4 into 3 inside. 4 into 3 is 12. Divided by 12, reminder is 0. So, this is the logic, people. How you have to use the logic from where I can eliminate the terms from. Now, moving ahead, a next question is on arithmetic progression. Slightly higher level compared to the previous problem in the previous test what we have solved. Now, this time the question says the sum of 25 terms in AP is a 525. Next 25 terms is a 725. Okay, sum of the next 25 terms. What is the common difference? That is a D value. Okay. Now, guys, look, you can you can use the SN formula here. That won't be a problem. SN is equals to N by 2 into uh, what do we get? 2A plus N minus 1 into D. Okay. You can use it for two terms. That is S25 and for the next 25 terms. But things will be complicated. It will be a very lengthy one. But remember, whenever given set of numbers, given set of numbers are in AP, the mean of the first term and the last term will give you the average. That will give you the average. Remember that. Now, look, let us first average of the first 25 terms. Average of first 25 terms is equals to first term plus last term. That is T1 plus T25 divided by 2. This will give you the average of the first 25 terms. Now, next 25 terms average. 
that is A50 from where 26 to 50 average of 26 to 50 again these will also be in AP now average will be first term in this series 6 T26 T26 plus last term T50 divided by 2 okay now T1 T1 can be written as T1 can be written as A plus sorry only A T1 is A plus T25 can be written as A plus 24D okay divided by 2 this is the average of A25 first 25 terms next these terms A26 minus 50 equal to first term in this case A plus 25D T26 A plus N minus 1 into D N minus 1 means a 26 minus 1 that's why I'll get 25D plus T50 at the term will be A plus 49d divided by 2 okay so what do we have here this we have it as uh, we can take two common here when i take two common here i'll be left with a plus 12d divided by 2 this this get cancelled again i can take a plus a 2a common here two common here if i take two common there will be a left out uh, can i take two common this time i don't think so i don't think so Ah, yes we can both are odd numbers 25 plus 49 that will be 74 74 when I take two common that will be half of 74 will be 36 am I right no 37 37 divided by 2 again 2 to cancel okay now guys we know that sum is equals to average into n average into n now, in this case, sum of first 25 terms is what is average A plus, did he, did he give anything? Yeah, sum is given already. A plus 12D, okay, we got it here. Now, this is how much? 525. 525 equals to A plus 12D. Again, in this case, we know that this sum, uh, sorry, sum of terms 26 to 50 is equals to average into n this is sorry guys this is only average this is only average into n how many terms 25 terms i forgot that part so here also into 25 okay now in this case average is a plus 37 into number of terms 26 to 25 again 25 Okay, so what is this? This sum in the question is given as 725 that is A plus 37 into 25. Okay, now let us cancel the, uh, cancel the terms here. What do we get? 25 into 1, 25 into 21. Okay, in this case 25 into 2 is 50. I will be left with how much? 50 gone is 225, 25 into 9. So, we have two equations here. One is A plus 12D equal to 21. And here, what do we have? A plus 37 equal to 29. Now, we want 37D. We want a D value. Let us subtract this from the numerator. These two get cancelled. 37D minus 12D. So, that will be 20. 5d minus 25d that equal to this side so what do we have here uh, 29 minus 21 that should be minus 8 minus minus get cancelled that should be 8 by 25 and that has to be our final answer a slightly higher level question people but do, do not worry do not worry this level of question will have a similar amount of the marks in TCS every question will not have same number of marks okay so these will be usually these kind of a questions are not given with the multiple choice you have to write the final answer there which will give you actually more marks compared to the uh, multiple choice questions so we have a question number seven as x into y is a divisible by four which of the following must be true okay so we have guys question number 7 x into y is divisible by 4 okay that's what we have which of the following must be true chalo dekhte 
if x is even, y is odd. Guys, x is even, y is odd. Look, even into odd, even into odd. Let us say, take some random numbers. In these kind of a cases, guys, you try, you always try to fail the option. Do not try to prove it right. Try to prove it wrong. Okay. Now he told, if x is even, y is odd. Why? If x is even, y also can be even. Agree? It is possible, but not all cases. For example, if you say, I'll take this as 2, I'll take this as 3. 2 into 3 is what? 6. Is 6 divisible by 4? No. That is gone. Even in one case it fails, the option, option is completely gone. So, first option is wrong. Okay, you can get it something like this. For example, let's say, four, if I take 4 into 3, that becomes a true. But do not try to make it right. If the condition has to be true, it must be true in all the cases. In one case, it fails, it's gone. So, first option does not pass. Second option, what do we have? Uh, if x equals to root 2, x equals to root 2, then y is odd. Guys, first thing root 2 is a rational, irrational number. It will never be divisible by 4 into y. If I put an odd number here, unless this is a multiple of 4, the entire product cannot be divisible by 4. So, this is also gone. Third case, option C. What do we have? If x equals to 0, then x plus y is not equal to 0. If x equal to 0, x plus y is not equal to 0. Look, when you put x equal to 0, x into y divisible by 4, x value becomes a 0 people, 0 into anything is 0. So, you need not even think about it. Right? 0 anything is 0, 0 cannot be divisible by 4. So, even option C is gone. So, what is the answer? Answer is a none of this option D. That must be our final answer. Remember, whenever you see these kind of questions, always try to prove your option is wrong there. Do not try to prove it right. Okay? Moving ahead. A question number 8. What does it say? It says, the sanitizers in a particular shop were sold and the diminishing stock was represented as 64, 49, 34, 25, 16. The shopkeeper had a mistake while taking a note of the diminishing stock. If uh, okay, if one of the above numbers are corrected, then the diminishing stock would follow a particular series. So, which number to be corrected? Which number to be corrected? Okay. Okay, just by looking at that, we can answer people. If you see, this is 8 square and this is 7 square. This God knows what square it is. But this is 5 square and this is 4 square. What should we get here? 6 square. What is 6 square? 36. But what do we have here? 34. So, this is the culprit in the series. Eliminate him and the rest, everything will be wonderful. Moving ahead, a question number 9, which is similar to the question which we have already solved. We have series something like this, 7. Uh, it is talking about arithmetic mean of 7 uh, numbers in the set 7. And the second set is 77. Third set is 777. Likewise, last set will have 7 sevens. Okay. Hmm. So, arithmetic mean of this is, this series is a 7 digit number. P, he is calling it P. All of whose digits are distinct, Acha, all the digits are distinct. Which of the following digits are not contained in the P itself? I think there is a print mistake. Okay, now let us see. First, let us calculate arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean was average of all these numbers. 7 plus 77 plus 777 plus 4 sevens, 5 sevens, 6 sevens plus finally 7 sevens divided by Totally how many numbers? 7 numbers. So, this is arithmetic mean. What do we do? We will take 7 common. We will take 7 common means what do we get? 1 plus 11 plus triple 1 plus 4 ones. Likewise, last will be 7 ones. Last will be 7 ones divided by 7. Okay. 7, 7 get cancelled. Now, what do we have? If you add all these things in the last paper we have discussed, this sum will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
okay if there are eight ones next it will be one two three four five six seven eight okay so exactly the similar question we have already discussed to people so this is the arithmetic mean so which of the digits are not present in this one look at the options one is there seven is there five is there but nine is the answer option b that must be our final answer okay guys moving ahead our question number 10 what do we have here we have when 242 is divided by a certain divisor now let me take it as a uh, 242 divided by certain divisor x the remainder is given as how much 8 again let me change my marker I think I'm not having it for open here okay and when 698 is divided by the same remain uh, divisor 698 is divided by same divisor then the remainder is equals to how much 9 however however the sum of the two numbers is divided by sum of the two numbers 242 and 698 is divided by the same divisor x then the remainder is very simple guys what do we have this we have 8 and this we have 9 okay uh, then the remainder is 4 what is the value of the divisor achavet okay see sum of these two 242 plus 698 divided by the same remainder x same divisor x then the remainder will be 4 that's what he told okay guys simple thing nothing much to do what is the remainder here 8 what is the remainder here 9 if you want this you basically need not to add these two numbers just add these two remainders what is that in place of this you can write 8 plus 9 that's it divided by x this remainder is given as 4 what is 8 plus 9 8 plus 9 is a 17 17 divided by x remainder is equals to 4 why i did that i will show you with an example okay now check out the options when i divide 17 with the 11 first option do i get remainder 4 no i'll get remainder as 6 when i divide with 17 17 is by 17 is completely divisible remainder is 0 13 17 divided by 13 13 into 1 13 remainder is absolutely 4 okay now why did i do this how could how do i get to know for example guys let us say uh, i will take a number let me take 44 divided by 5 what is the remainder 4 okay if i take let us say mm, 43 divided by 5 what is the remainder 3 5 is 40 remainder is 3 now here let us add both of them 44 and 43 what do we get 87 87 by 5 what is the remainder if you see remind if you see remainder is 2 right 5 into 17 is 85 remainder is a 2 well you need not to actually add those numbers you can just add the reminders here what is 4 plus 3 7 what is 7 by 2 remainder is sorry 7 by 5 4 plus 2 7 7 by 5 will also give the remainder as 2 only so that's what i did here instead of adding these numbers again just add the remainders in the previous case okay divided by the same divisor that we know as 4 go with the options you will get your answer as 13 moving ahead question number 11 what do we have out of total number of students in a college 12 percent are interested in sports okay let us assume total r mm, as t total number of students is equals to t okay now in that he told 12 percent are interested in sports in sports there are 12 percent of total next three fourth of total number of students are interested in dancing three fourth means 75 percent dancing must be a dancing school 75 percent of total students are interested 3 by 4 is 75 3 by 4 into 100 you'll get 75 percent next 10 percent of the total number of students are interested in singing singing is how many 10 percent of total students now remaining 15 students are not interested in any of the activities remaining 15 students he is not talking about the percentage now okay now observe guys 75 plus 10 is 85 85 plus 
12 is 97 percent. Now 97 percent of the students are interested in one or the other activities, right? It means still how many three, how many percent remaining three percent of the total students are not interested in any of the activities which according to the question is 15 students because in the question he clearly told that 15 students are not interested in anything okay 97 percent are interested in one or the other activities it means the remaining three percent of the total are not interested in any of the activities so in the question he also told us that 15 students are not interested in any activities so this three percent of the total must be equal to 15 so what do we get 3 by 100 of total is equals to 15 3 1 so 3 5 so total is equals to 5 into 100 500 and that must be our final wish final answer okay moving ahead question number 12 so what do we have here salaries of kamakya and urvashi which are actually a movie theaters both are movie theaters in bangalore now salaries of kamakya and urvashi are in the ratio of 3 is to 4 okay so we have salaries of kamakya and urvashi they're in the ratio 3 is to 4 if the salary of each is increased by rupees 5000, the new ratio becomes 32 is to 41. What is Kamakya's salary? Achha. Guys, this is the ratio of the salaries. These are not original salaries. Let us consider original salaries as 3x and 4x. Now, if rupees 5000 is added to each one of them, that is Kamakya's salaries will become 3x plus 5000 and Urvashi's salary will become 4x plus 5000. If 5000 is added to each of their salaries, then the ratio becomes 32 is to 41. Okay. Now, if you get the value of x, then we can get Kamakya salary is what we want in the question. So, let us see what do we have here. 3x plus 5000 divided by 4x plus 5000 is equals to 32 divided by 41. 32 divided by 41. Now, cancel uh, so cross multiplication 41 into 3x will be 121x plus 41 into 5000 that will be 25 25000 exactly no am i right 5 force 20 5 once 5 25 205 i'm so sorry 205 followed by three zeros perfect that is equals to 32 into 4 that is 128 128x plus that will be 150 plus 10 160 followed by triple zero cross multiplication okay so let us see we'll send that 121x up to the other side we'll be left with 7x 128 minus 121 so let us send this 1 lakh 60 thousand 1 lakh 60 thousand guys i'm still doubtful about this wait 4x into 32 right that's what i did in the beginning or this one yeah this 4x into 32. Oh, yeah, I messed it up, I think. Hold on, guys. 128. This is 128x. Oh, no. This I have written 128x. 5000 into 32. This is perfect. No, this one only. I'm so sorry. So, this is 3 into 121x. Perfect. 5000. So, 205. Perfect. Guys, perfect, perfect, perfect. So, what do we have here? When I bring this, this side, uh, we will be having... 205 minus 1 lakh 60,000. I think I am doing some mistake. Anyways, let us see. So, what do I get? 45,000. It is not divisible by. That is what I am little worried about. 32 is to 41 is perfect. First, we did one step. This is 120. This is the problem. That is 123x. Okay. 3x into 41 is 123x. Now, when I send it to other side, this is 5x. Now, we can cancel. That is what I was little worried. The cancellation is not possible. This is x equals to 9000. x equal to 9000. Now, whose salary do we want? Kamakya salary. Kamakya salary is how much? 3x. That is 3 into 9000. Okay. So, 3 into 9000 should give us 27,000. Absolutely perfect answer. Moving ahead, question number 13, based on pipes and systems, which is a part of time and work, what do we have? 
Pipe A can fill a tank in 10 minutes. Pipe B can empty the full tank in 15 minutes. If pipe B is connected exactly at the half of the height of a uniform tank. Now both the pipes are opened simultaneously. What is the time taken to complete a uh, to completely fill the tank. Okay, guys, there are two pipes, pipe A and pipe B. Simple question, nothing to worry about here. A takes 9 minutes to fill the tank. B takes 15 minutes to empty the tank. It means this is a leak. This is a leak which is doing negative work and this is doing positive work. Now, let us see the representation. Okay, see, he is telling that there is a uniform tank now pipe A is filling it, pipe A is filling it, but pipe B is emptying it, but he told pipe P is at exactly half of, pipe P is at exactly half of the height of the uniform tank, okay, and both the pipes are opened simultaneously, what is the time taken, well, simple thing here guys, you cannot directly make them work together, if you observe pipe B, pipe B is at half of the height means till Pipe A adds water till this position, till half of the tank, pipe B is not working. Okay, now, our regular step remains the same. If you do not know that, please watch time and work, time and work basics in our videos, guys. Okay, now, work is equal, work, take any number divisible by 10 and 15, 30. 30 liters is the capacity of the tank. Speed of A, work by time, 30 by 10, 3 liters per minute. It means pipe A can add 3 liters per minute, whereas B, 30 by 15 is a 2 liter per minute. Speed of B, it can empty 2 liters per minute. Now, together, A plus B, this is adding 3 liters, but this is adding 2 liters, means only 1 liter per minute is being added. But, hold on, first half of the tank, till the water reaches here, till water reaches here, only A will work, only a will work. So, first, what is the total capacity? 15 liters. So, for first 15 liters, only A will be working. Now, time is a work by speed. Work by speed. First 15 liters, work is 15 liter divided by speed. Whose speed? Only A. Why? Till first 15 liters, only A is working. Only water reaches here, B will start working. Now, speed of A, that is 3 liter per minute. Okay. So, 3 into 1, 3 into 5. So, liter, liter get cancelled, minutes go to the numerator. So, first 5 minutes, only A will be working and A adds 15 liters. Next 15 liters, again time is equal to work by speed. Work is how much? Remaining 15 liter divided by now speed is only 1 liter per minute. Why? Once the water reaches this level, first 15 liters are filled. Now, B will also be working from now onwards. So, A will be adding 3 liters per minute. B will be emptying 2 liters per minute. So, only 1 liter per minute is being added. So, liter, liter get cancelled. This is 15 minutes altogether. First 5 liters, 15 liters will be added in 5 minutes. Second 15 liters will be added in 15 minutes. Altogether, in 20 minutes, the tank will be full. Moving ahead, our next question. The height of a right circular cylinder is 10 centimeter and radius of the base is 7 centimeter. Then the difference between the base area and the curved surface area is achha. Guys, this is about a cylinder mensuration. Well, like we all hate to remember those formulae of cylinder, cone, pyramid and so on, right? Well, you need not to remember any of those formulae people. I will go in a method where if you know only rectangle formula and a circle formula, that is sufficient, right? So, formulas of circle and so formulas of uh, rectangle, that would be sufficient. Let me show you why. First, uh, let us see a rectangle first. Mm, I'm sorry, a cylinder. A cylinder, a cylinder will be something like this, okay. This is how a cylinder looks like. Now, see, this is the base area and this is the top area. Now, the surrounding, just imagine a drum people, the surrounding area is nothing but curved surface area or lateral surface area. Now, to that when we add the top and the bottom areas, that will become total surface area. 
Now he is asking what is the difference between area of the base of the cylinder and this one curved surface area, right? So curved surface area minus base area. Okay. Now if you observe people, you know, imagine this is a cylinder. Okay. This part is a cylinder. So this uh, like the entire curved part that is the curved surface area. Now if you want this people like imagine, uh, let me just uh, take a paper here. Can you give me a paper? Just no. If you look at the paper guys, see this is a cylinder. Okay. This is a cylinder, right? Now there is nothing on the top and there is nothing on the bottom. Now this is exactly the curved surface area. Now what happens if I cut it and if I make it like this? That is exactly a rectangle. That is rectangle length into breadth. In this case, breadth is a height which is given in the question. So the curved surface is just the rectangle people. What is the area of rectangle? Area of rectangle is equals to length into breadth. Now in this case, what is the breadth? Now once again, let me show you. This was the cylinder, right? So this is, this is the length. This is the length. If I again convert it into a cylinder now, if I again convert it into a cylinder now, if you see the length becomes the circumference of the circle, circumference of the circle as simple as that guys. Now observe, here the height is given as how much 10 centimeter and the radius of the base is given as 7 centimeter. Okay, as I told you curved surface area is exactly same as rectangle rectangle area of rectangle now length into breadth length is the entire circumference circumference that is nothing but 2 pi r right into breadth is height that is 10 centimeter minus base area base area is what circle that is pi r square let us apply what can we do so if i take r common here if I take R common or let us apply people, what happens? Y again, 22 by 7 into R value is 7 radius into 10 centimeter minus pi R square. Again, 22 by 7 into R square is 7 into 7. 7, 7 cancel. Here also 7, 7 cancel. This is 22 into 2, 44. 44 into 10 is 440 minus what do we have here 22 into 7 that will be 140 plus 14 154 if i subtract this 154 that should give us 386 that must be our final answer see if you know like you know how the actually cylinder is made you really need not to remember any of the formula people be it a cone be it a pyramid everywhere so there you just know again formula of a, a triangle area of triangle if you know that you can deal with the pyramids and even cones also that we will be seeing in the further question papers moving ahead so one last question of the paper this was something like this ajay can completely scan and remove the virus in a particular system in 15 days working 4 hours a day vijay can infect the system with the virus in 10 days working 4 hours a day if both work together ajay works for 8 hours a day Whereas Vijay works 4 hours a day, which of the following will be true? Okay, slightly lengthy question, but let us get it guys. Ajay can completely scan and remove the virus in a particular system in 15 days. Ajay takes 15 days to scan and remove the virus. Now, Vijay can infect the system with the virus in 10 days, okay, but he is doing a negative work. He is doing a negative work. Remember that. <laughs> he is disinfecting but he is infecting. Now, when both are working for 4 hours a day, 4 hours a day. If they both work together and Ajay works 8 hours a day, where Vijay works 4 hours a day, which of the following will be true? Okay. First, let us deal with this. Take work. Number divisible by 30 and 15 and 10 is 30 units. Okay. Now, 
this guy's speed is 2 units per day, this guy's speed is 1 unit per day. Okay. Now, but according to the question, look, when he works 4 hours, he can do 2 units per day. When he works 4 hours, he will do 1 unit per day. But, but finally he told when they are working together, when they are working together, he works 8 hours a day. It means a double the speed. Right? 4 hours per day, it is 2 units per day. But if he works 8 hours per day, that will become 4 units per day. Speed doubles. This guy will be working at same speed. That is 1 unit per day. Now together when they are working, what is the work? 3 units per day. Okay. Now what do we have? Did we do any mistake here? 2 units per day. This guy is 1 unit per day. When the both are working, uh, what is it? If both work together and Ajay works for 8 hours a day. Ajay works 8 hours a day. Okay. Uh, working 10 days, 4 hours a day. If both work together for 4, <coughs> for four hours a day, hmm, Sorry, yaar, I am so sorry people. This is 3 units per day. This is 3 units per day. 30 by 10 people, so sorry. I am very poor with the calculations. 30 by 10 is 3 units per day. Now this is 3, this is 4, this is 3. Here it was 2 units per day. If he works 4 hours a day. But when he works 8 hours a day, that becomes a double. Uh, so here we should get only 1 unit per day. Okay, 1 unit per day. Now, so let us see, which of the following will be true? Now, first statement, what does it say? The system will completely free from virus within the 15 days. Am I right? Wrong. Why? Time taken is work by speed, 30 units divided by. Their speed is only 1 unit per day. So they totally take 30 days. So first one is absolutely wrong. Second statement, what does it say? The system can never be free from virus. That is also wrong. Look, he can disinfect 4, but he can infect only 3. Okay, totally 30 units is there. So, 1 unit per day, they are disinfecting because this is positive work, this is negative work. So, rate of work is, will be positive. 1 unit per day, 30 units of virus can be removed in 30 days. So, work will be finished for sure. This is wrong. Third one, what do we have? System will be free of virus in 30 days. Absolutely, we did it. Third is right. Fourth. What do we have for the fourth? We have the system will be three-fourth virus free in 22.5 days. In 22.5 days. Now observe. Three-fourth of virus free. That means three-fourth of total 30 units. That is 90 by 4. So that will, will be exactly 20. Mm, am I right? 3 fourth. Yeah, this is 90. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. 22.5. Okay. So 22.5. 3 fourth of the total virus is 22.5 units. Okay. 1 unit per day means obviously to finish this much, they will take exactly 22.5 days only. So this is also absolutely right. So what is the answer? Both the 3 and 4 must be right. Do we have the option? Yes. Option number C is my final answer. So guys, this is the paper. This is the first model paper which we prepared based on previous uh, TCS paper, right? TCS uh, original mock test based on that I slightly modified it and we, we prepared this. So from the next paper onwards, you will be seeing much, much variety of the questions based on the previous year papers of TCS. So this is all for the day people. Have a good learning. Stay safe. Stay home.